Welcome back to E Dashrodic the Brand. Hi, I'm your host, Eden Lee. If you don't already know me, now you fucking do. And I am one of those dating coaches that tells it like it is. One of the very few, because most of them just be doing you a disservice. Welcome back to my podcast. Whether you're watching it on YouTube or on Spotify or anywhere you listen to your podcast, please take the time to fucking subscribe. You, you st- stingy ass motherfuckers. It means a lot to me and I appreciate all of the newcomers and here. This is a really great video slash podcast to listen to on the fucking daily. Like most of mine are, honestly. Save them, put them on repeat, share with your fucking insecure little friend. It is what it is. We've all been there. We all are going through them. We're all trying to do and be better. A lot of now. you guys have been cheated on. A lot of you guys have had really traumatic relationships. I want you to leave that in the past. Easier said than done, Eden. Uh, I fucking know. But I hate that you guys always say easier said than done because obviously the easiest route is to sit on your fucking ass and be the way that you are right now instead of getting up and doing better and then actually progressing in life. And Self-confidence having- and esteem comes from within and it will be exacerbated we love that because it sounds like masturbated it will be exacerbated in your relationships relationships will actually bring up some ugly fucking parts of you your partner will hold up a mirror of the things that you can do better on that you haven't healed from and that's why relationships are not all daisies and rainbows now i don't want to see the fucking trolls in my comments being like well what's the point in dating just be single yeah okay miserable little fuck Go be 90 years old in your deathbed with nobody around you, no problem. If that's okay with you, then do it. There's nothing wrong with being single. But for those that actually value relationships and believe in it and want to be in one, you need to fix yourself. Now, it's a lifelong process, we know, but if you are on the right path, it will be easier and easier as time goes on. And relationships might actually be able to benefit you if you have a healthy partner. But if you haven't started your healing process, working on yourself, understanding that trauma from the past should not be brought into the present or the the future it shouldn't be brought up into your new relationship if your past partner was a piece of shit pick better do better and if this new partner gives you no reason to not trust them you should trust them it's that simple or else you're starting the relationship on a rocky unhealthy page and you'll never be able to be confident within that relationship now let's say you're already there great glad now this is the video for you this is the episode for you then these are all fucking concepts that will help you and i want you to remember them okay concept number one no one can steal your man or your woman No one can steal your man or your woman. So if you're in a relationship or if you're dating somebody and you are cringing at the fact that they're out in public and maybe some girl is looking at him or some guy is looking at her or they're talking to the barista or they're at the bar and there are good looking people around and you're nervous about that. I want you to understand that that is your biggest mistake here. No one can actually steal your person if they're your fucking person. Now, don't roll your fucking eyes. It's true. There will always be temptation around. There will always be bigger, better, smarter, hotter, whatever the fuck it might be. But if your partner is really in it for you, my friend, ain't nobody like you and they won't be interested. And nobody can steal somebody that is dedicated to you. They won't put themselves in in situations that tempt them. They won't be looking at other people. Their eyes are fucking down. No wandering eye here. They'll be committed to you. They won't be swayed and they don't care about other people. Now, if your person is shady and gives into temptation and is sexting random people and is just being a slob, that's not your person. When you decide that a person who does you wrong or might be shady or isn't treating you right is not for you, you're basically telling yourself mentally, emotionally into the fucking core of you that, hey, I don't want this person. This is not my fucking person. Meaning... I deserve better. And the more you practice that in those moments, nobody can steal you. If you want to fucking steal him, you're stealing my problem. Bitch, enjoy. If you can have my man, I don't want him. If, if there's no sense of exclusivity with being with you, if you don't hold that as a standard, then you're going to be an insecure little bitch, right? When I decided in my younger years that if anyone can take my person, keep him. The same for me, baby. I don't like it. I don't want it. If you can go and look at somebody else, go be with them. I don't want you, right? My man is going to be eyes on me, is going to be all about me. And let me tell you, those guys do exist because I've been with a few of them, actually. And they were obsessed with me in a healthy way. They didn't want nobody. A girl could walk around fucking naked. They wouldn't even want to look. They don't even care. Okay, and she could be hotter, bigger ass, bigger tits, bigger whatever. They don't even care. That's the level you have to hold yourself to, guy or girl. You want loyalty, you want respect, you want trust. You got to have a partner that's willing to pull up 
like that and hold their end of the bargain. And if they don't, you don't want them. This is a huge confidence mindset switch that a lot of people don't think about. They just think it's just like a bunch of angry girls talking like, if you can have my main, keep him. It goes deeper than that. And if you start to train your mind to think that, you'll eventually get on that wavelength. You'll eventually fully transform and actually believe it and feel confident about your decisions and not stress about what are they doing? Who are they talking to? Who's looking at them? What's going on, on their phone? Bitch, you want to be shady? Be shady. Lies don't have legs. Shit will come out, period. And when it does, if it does, if that's even the case, ciao, ciao, bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you for showing me who you are. Thank you. It's a blessing because you don't believe in a shortage of people. You don't believe that you can't do better and you don't believe that you can't get better. It's that simple. So once you train your mind on this concept, bitch, you're golden. Concept number two is flow like water. I often do this practice with everything. So I, I am an anxious person, believe it or not. Imagine a can of fucking Coke and a bottle of water. When you shake a can of Coke, it bursts, it reacts with any movement, with any way that it's pulled, it's going to react to that motion. So look at the motion as life. Okay, wow. So fucking cliche and cheesy. I could throw up, but it's true. For my visual fucking people out there, this is what you got to do. Close your eyes and fucking picture it. When you are stressed or insecure, I want you to think about this. Think about a water bottle. You shake it, you open it up, there's no reaction. It moves the way the world moves. It moves the way you move that fucking bottle. So in any moment when you're stressed about your partner or something is happening, I want you to always pause. I want you to act like water. Allow the motions to happen and then think about how you're going to react if you need a reaction at all. What this does is it trains you to build the threshold I've spoken about in several videos of something happening to you and that thought process before you actually do something about it or speak on something. It builds that threshold so you're not impulsive, so you're not acting like a brat. You're not acting jealous. When we think of something and then act on it, what we're doing is we're strengthening that connection in our brains, okay? So if you constantly freak out at your partner because you get a little jelly, okay, or you get a little nervous about something that really you have no reason to be nervous about, I want you to tell yourself, close my eyes. I'm going to think of a water bottle shaking. I'm going to open it and I'm not going to react. Okay. I'm just going to go with the flow here. Going with the flow allows you to build confidence with your goddamn self and with the universe. You have trust in the universe. And even if you don't, you're building that trust. Because normally when we act out of impulse, there's not much thought that goes into it. And a lot of times we act out of these emotions such as anger, envy, jealousy, all that stuff. And when you act on that, You're training that insecure part of your brain, okay, that low self-esteem little monster in your head and saying, yes, I'm feeding you. Grow more. Be more. When you stop and take control over those moments and think a little bit more and pause without reacting, you're creating less conflict in your relationship. You're an educated thinker, an educated partner, and an educated decision maker. But you're also teaching yourself to trust, to wait a little bit, to think twice, to breathe. Okay. Upholding your boundaries is still a very important thing to build confidence. Nope, I will not be treated that way. Nope, I will not be spoken to that way. Nope, I don't believe in strip clubs. And I, nope. won't, I won't accept less than. Sorry. That doesn't necessarily mean to be a bitch and be like, this, my way or the highway, bitch. No, no, no. We all have boundaries. Like, I, I will not be disrespected. There's a boundary. If you fucking raise your voice while you're having an argument, I'm leaving the conversation. You have to make sure that you support your boundaries, just like you would support your morals, ethics, and beliefs. Stand behind them. Show yourself that I trust myself, right? When you trust yourself, you build confidence. And this is a common theme with all the concepts I'm bringing up. Stand by you, Okay regardless how much you love that person. I don't care what your partner says. I don't care. Compromise, all that bullshit. That word compromise has been used and abused. You compromise together on things that do not require you to compromise on beliefs, morals, and values. Those are things that create who you are. And if you have to compromise that, you're with the wrong partner. You guys should both be in sync when it comes to those things and compromise on stupid things like okay when I'm driving I get to play my music and when you're driving you get to play your music you know or in the morning maybe instead of opening the windows and meditating can you do that in a different room because I still want to catch some sleep like that's compromise you dumb fucks okay that's compromise or like we'll do Christmas at my parents this year and next year we'll do Christmas at your parents like compromise that's compromise not fucking the the essence of who you are like You guys compromise and then get mistreated and you're like, oh, whoops, why am I in a shitty relationship? Because you compromise the most important things and things that you're not supposed to compromise on. They're not really compromisation. It's just giving up on you. So stand behind those boundaries regardless. 
you show up for yourself like that, your confidence will boom no matter what anyone's reaction is. And this is why it's important to start this at the very early stages of dating and relationships. Because when you fucking suddenly decide to be like, I'm going to stand up for my fucking boundaries and for my, well, I don't know what this accent is, honestly, very strange. It's new a new one. one for me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stand up for my boundaries and fuck you, Johnny. Well, here's the thing. He's like, bitch, you, what? But suddenly, no, it doesn't work for me because I, I fucked with a person that didn't have the boundaries. Now they have boundaries. I'm not interested. Boom. That's when you're going to see a lot of movement in your life. Okay, a lot of people are going to be exiting real quick. And you want that. You want that. And you're going to trust that process because you're not scared to lose somebody that isn't fucking treating you the way you deserve to be treated. That builds confidence. This is one of my secret little tips, concepts that has actually helped build my confidence. It's very hard to do at the beginning because normally we all come from a lack mindset. We're scared. We're not going to find someone better. We're hurting over this person. We don't want to lose this person. You're scared that you're not going to get the reaction that you want from this. And you'll soon understand what I mean. Remove yourself. Do not be scared to step away from disrespect. Do not be scared to fucking block a motherfucker who is played with you too much do not be scared absence is silent but deadly it is powerful it has gotten me what I wanted whenever I wanted and it's not me playing the silent treatment okay it's not me dipping when the going gets tough no 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 I'm not gonna put up with you raising your voice I'm getting up and I'm fucking leaving okay until you cool your ass down and then you come to me and you have a conversation with me when you are ready Somebody disrespects me, someone cheats on me, someone lies to me. You think I give them 300 chances? Baby, I'm out. Ciao. Block, delete. I don't need an explanation. You don't need me to explain why I'm fucking leaving because you already know because you're a slimy little motherfucker. Sorry. And if you think you can treat me that way, I don't want to be around you. Okay? I've learned to remove myself from friendships, relationships, dating stages, okay? If I'm getting put on fucking red for weeks and then I'm getting a message, hey, what are you up to? Want to hang out? Fuck no. I've already removed myself from you. You think I'm just a girl on the roster? I remove myself. I don't speak. I don't talk. I block. I exit. I'm ghost. Okay? You're allowed to play ghost and you're allowed to be ghost when someone disrespects you. Okay? Especially if you guys aren't in an actual relationship and you're just in the dating phase. A little bit of disrespect, you leave. You don't really need much of an explanation. They should know why. <laughs> and if they don't know, great. You dodged a goddamn fucking bullet. What removing yourself does is it trains, again, that lack mindset from being so lacky and tacky, okay? What it does is it basically says, all right, I'm going to leave. And you know what? If that means I have to be alone, there ain't nothing wrong with me being fucking alone because it's so much better than being with fucking you who makes me feel alone anyways, makes me feel like shit anyways, who disrespects me. I'm not going to put up with it. I'm not going to teach you nothing. I'm not. No, it's again, standing by you, standing by your morals, values, your standards, your boundaries. And it's also being like, I deserve better. So I'm not going to be around this. And it's, it's not even worth another second of my time. You start to show yourself how you're valuing your time by being action oriented, by taking that step, by removing yourself. And trust me, trust me, the magic in that is wild. Yes, they'll be sliding in your DMs. Yes, they'll be fucking emailing you. Yes, they'll be sending you fucking handwritten letters, baby. Speaking from experience. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you go back on on your actions and your words you stick by them and i promise you right around the corner there's someone greater and better to reward you for being a fucking good person who loves themselves and is not going to put themselves in a shitty unhealthy toxic situation or relationship put in effort in every relationship in every dating situation you should always go in putting effort as well show them that you care make it be known be decent, be kind, be you. And it's not that hard really nowadays because you stand up for the rest of the fucking crowd who doesn't know how to fucking keep a conversation going. Putting an effort into a relationship, regardless if you're a girl or a guy, regardless of what the dynamic is, putting an effort into taking the time to be thoughtful, taking the time to message first, maybe giving a call first if you normally don't do that, planning a date, being mindful, just putting an effort into the relationship also shows that you're confident, right? You're confident in your relationship. You're confident in your choice. And you're showing them from the bottom of your heart while you're putting your ego aside that you want to do these things, that you care. Putting right. in effort and not being nervous about looking a certain type of way shows confidence as well. So like I have pulled up sometimes while I was dating and, and made the first move just because I wanted to spontaneously. Did I do it often? 
No. Would I have continued doing it after I made the first move? Probably not because that's just not who I am. However, that built my confidence going and talking to people, you know, getting myself out there, building confidence, regardless of the rejection, regardless of how it goes or how it doesn't. I don't let that define me. And how did I not let it define me? It took practice. It took practice. I'm like, you know what? Again, if this was my man, this would be working. But if it's not working, you ain't my man. So thank you that I know this information cut and dry. And that's it. Because dating, especially at the beginning, should not be a, a, a crazy big fucking mess of a roller coaster, okay? Of like confusion and question marks. It ain't it. He ain't it. Putting in effort really does help with confidence. So get out there. Talk to people. Do your fucking thing. Guy or girl. Enjoy your time. Learn from it. Build confidence that way. You guys are too scared. You guys are too pussy. You guys are behind a fucking screen all day. This is why you guys lack confidence. And you put this fake facade on online because that's the only way you can get away with it. But in, in real life, baby, I see you at the fucking bar, head down, fucking nervous as hell, looking like a scared little chipmunk, okay? Last but not least, have a fucking life. I think the biggest fucking factor in shitty relationships is because one partner relies on the other way too goddamn much and there's a certain amount of leaning on each other that is appropriate and that is encouraged in relationships but it's a balancing act okay sometimes you're going to need to lean on your partner more than he or she will and vice versa which is great that's the point in being on a team together you pull each other's weight sometimes a little bit but it can't be a consistent thing this is where having a life is so fucking make it or break it if you don't have your own fucking bag going if you don't have your own fucking family life if you don't have your own fucking friends if you don't have outside of each other outside i don't care like i moved to a new fucking city i have no friends here i have no fucking life here i have nothing here besides his life but i've made it a point to to make friends to do things on my fucking own he doesn't even know these people and i don't want him to know these people he will know them when i introduce them to him This keeps that sexy independence for one another, but it also allows you to have your own life, your own outlets. You can tell them stories about things that they don't even know about yet, right? Like there's that excitement, that spark alive, that you guys have two different lives, but you come together and sometimes they cross over, which is beautiful. It's always exciting. There's always something going on. It keeps you mentally stimulated and it makes you feel independent. A lot of people throw the words independence, self-esteem, self-confidence out. Where do you start? Where do you start? writing a journal, reading a fucking book, meditating, all this shit, crystal up your asshole. Like enough, enough. That shit doesn't fucking work if you don't have other things going on in your life, right? This is supplemental shit. We're talking about the make it or break it shit. Have a fucking life. Create that for you. Find a hobby. Keep busy. Babe, you know what? I'm not free every night actually. Okay. All right. Miss Independent. We love to see it. Have a hobby. Have a life. Encourage the same for your partner. No. Have a date night once a week. But the other nights, you've got a lot to do. You guys can touch base, of course, but you've got, you know, basketball practice. I don't know, fucking arts and crafts, fucking whatever, uh, playing piano, whatever it might be. Find a fucking hobby, find a fucking job, find a fucking friend, period. And when you have that, you have a, you've built kind of a well-rounded life and your relationship's only going to get better. I promise you. I have been through and maybe this is a little embarrassing for me to say but I've been at my weakest and the most insecure when I didn't have all that going for me when I struggled in those areas of my life and I only had a boyfriend okay I was not a happy person to be with I was not a good partner I was miserable and I took it out on my partner without even realizing it made me look insecure I felt insecure and it lowered my self-esteem after I worked so hard at building it up so always maintain these other areas of your life because Although your relationship can be very important, it can be serious, it can be whatever the fuck it it is to you. But if you don't have those other areas of your life, you're not a well-rounded person. And if you're not a well-rounded person, you're not a healthy person. If you're not a healthy person, you can't be a healthy partner. And if you're not a healthy partner, you cannot be in a healthy relationship. Simple. You will sabotage it if you're the unhealthy one or they will sabotage it if they are the unhealthy one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a little bit of a long one, a lot to take in, but so important, so pivotal. Send it to a friend, watch it with your partner, watch it with your best friend, talk about it. What's your fucking game plan? Leave it down below. Give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for the notifications so that you never miss any of this fire because we know you fucking need it. I love you guys and I will speak to you very soon. Take care. Bye.